Optum G2 is a next generation FE tool for geotechnical practitioners. Optum G2 is a unique program that combines classical FEA together with limit analysis. The package includes classical FE analysis, including elastoplastic analysis, very useful for calculating load displacement curves. Choose to use either associated or non-associated flu rules. The package comes with many material models, including hardening soil and small strain stiffness. As a unique feature, Optum G2 also includes limit analysis. This lets you calculate bearing capacities or strength reduction factors in one single step, allowing you to move faster ahead than ever before. Also, calculate upper and lower bound values, which helps you or lets you find exact solutions, verifying your results fast and easy. Optum G2 is one package with many tools. Analysis types include elastoplastic analysis, limit analysis, strength reduction, also known as C5 reduction, seepage, consolidation, and elastic analysis. Structural elements include plates, anchors, geogrids, interfaces, pile rows, and nail rows. G2 can be used for any geotechnical challenge, including foundations, excavations, embankments, slope stability, retaining walls, and seepage and groundwater flow. No job is too small or too large for Optum G2. Now let's have a look at the program. The user interface in G2 is very simple and intuitive. It consists of the following elements. A canvas for drawing your structure and defining geometry. A ribbon with different tools for defining geometry, for defining and applying materials, features for setting boundary conditions and loads, and finally, a results tab for visualizing and documenting your results. To the right is the property grid. It contains four different tabs. The Properties tab is where you edit and get all information for all your materials, geometries and attributes. The Stage Manager is the Analysis Control Center. Here you set up your different analysis types, do your stage, excavations, etc. The two final tabs, Project and Customize, are tabs for changing project-specific properties. Now let's try to calculate the bearing capacity of a standard strip foundation. In the Geometry tab, I'll choose the Rectangle tool to define my Earth domain. I'll define a domain that is 20 meters wide and 10 meters high. Next, I'll define using the same tool my foundation, which will be 2 meters wide and have an embedment depth of 1 meter, like this. Pressing Escape exits the tool. Also, I would like to define some layered soils. Doing that, I choose the line tools and I'm going to draw a line 2 meters below the surface. Again, press escape to exit, exit the tool. Now I have the following domains. I have a top domain for my top layer, I have my foundation domain, and I have my bottom layer like this. 
Next, I would like to define materials. Every time you start up G2, it comes with these predefined materials. You can right-click on the canvas and delete all these materials to start on a clean slate. So I'll do that. Delete all. Yes. Then I'll add a new material. I'm going to be using more coulomb for modeling both sand and clay. I'll call this first material sand. Give it a color. And I'll choose the standard stiffness parameters, and then I will put the cohesion to zero and the friction angle to 30 degrees. A social flow rule is used in this example. Tension cutoff, standard, unit weight standard, initial condition standards, and will not be including hydraulics in this project. Next, I would like to define my clay material. Now I can, again, add a solid material called, again, I'll be using more coulomb, and this time I'll call it clay. And use a cohesion of 10 and a friction angle of 20. For the concrete, I can choose either a rigid material or an elastic material. For this case, I'll choose the rigid material, which is found here. I'll call that concrete. And give it a unit weight of 25 kilonewton per square per cubic meter. So, these are my materials. Now I need to define assign them. There are two ways of assigning materials in Optum. You can either drag the materials over, like so, or you can select your domain and then click on the specific material, like so. In the top bottom layer, I'll add the clay. Now I've defined and assigned my materials. Next thing I want to look at are features. Standard fixities are applied with a single click on a button, like so. And next I'll assign to the foundation load a distributed multiplier load, like so. I can choose whatever intensity of this load I wish. To start with, I'll just put a load of 1 kilonewton per square meter, or 1 kilopascal, acting in the downward direction. Now this, this finalizes my model, and then next step is moving on to the analysis center in the stage manager. In the stage manager, I can set up my different analysis types. So I'm going to be calling my first stage for lower bound, which will be a limit analysis. So the purpose of this analysis is to ask the program, given this geometry with these material parameters, how much can I multiply this load with before I reach failure? That is the result of the limit analysis, a load multiplier. Choosing the lower bound will guarantee that my result will always be on the safe side. I'm going to increase number of elements from 100 to 2000 and choose mesh adaptivity, yes, and use the default settings. Let's try to run this. Pressing run makes this analysis run table appear where you can follow your analysis. So here you see the result with a collapse multiplier of 438 corresponding to a maximum load of 438 kilopascal before the foundation collapses. In the stage manager, I'll now clone this stage and rename it to UB for rubber bound. 
I'll keep exactly the same settings, but just change my lower bound element to upper bound element type and run again. Now the program converges from upwards down and it finds a collapse load, a collapse multiplier of 497 corresponding to a collapse load of 497 kilopascals. Let's summarize the calculation so far. In our first run, which was a limit analysis, we found a lower bound of 438 kPa and an upper bound of 497 kPa. The correct solution or the exact solution is somewhere in between these two intervals. A very good guess or first estimate of the exact solution is the mean value of the lower bound and the upper bound, which is calculated at 468 kPa. Right now, the best estimate for a co collapse load is the 468 kPs plus minus the width of the interval, which is plus minus 29 kPa. Let's see if we can increase the accuracy of the calculation. In the results view, we can see that there's a lot happening here at the corners of the foundation. Now this is very classical when you do a foundation on sand, you have a singularity at this corner. So a very good thing is to increase the mesh density at these specific points. And I'll show you how to do that now. First, I will duplicate the lower bound, move it once down, and I'll call this LB2. In the corners, I will add under features what we call a mesh fan. And I'll change the mesh fan from 30 to 5, and I'll do the same here. What the program will try to do now is create a very refined mesh fan at these corners which will result in a better accuracy. I will again clone the stage and call it UB for upper bound 2 and change the element type from lower to upper and run. So now, the collapse multiplier for the lower bound was 448, and for the upper bound, 487. Let's try to look at these results in our overview. The second run, again limit analysis, but this time with mesh fans, increased the lower bound value from 438 to 448, and decreased the upper bound value from 487 from 497, sorry, to 487. If we calculate the mean value, we get exactly the same result as before. So best estimate for collapse load is now 468 kPa as before, but plus minus 20 kPa. So this means a reduction of the interval from 6% without mesh fans to 4% with mesh fans. What about displacements? A common misconception is that displacements are calculated in limit analysis. They are not. Instead, a collapse mechanism is calculated and scaled, just like you would in a frequency analysis calculating a mode shape or a buckling analysis calculating a bulk buckling shape. When you in Optum G2 for a limit analysis plot displacements, you will notice that no units appear in the distribution. This is to indicate that a collapse mechanism is being plotted and units are not relevant. Also, if you go to the model and check and click on a certain material, you will notice in the property grid that only strength parameters appear. In the settings not relevant to analysis, you will find the stiffness parameters as well as the flow rule and initial conditions. This is because these parameters are not relevant 
in a limit analysis. In a limit analysis, the flow rule is always associated and stiffness parameters do not enter the problem. Let us now try to construct a load dis displacement curve using classical FE analysis. To set up an elastoplastic analysis, first go to the stage manager. We'll duplicate stage UB2, change the name to EP, and next change the analysis type from limit analysis to multiplier elastoplastic analysis. Now you'll see different settings appear below in the stage manager relevant for a multiplier elastoplastic analysis. If you select a material on the canvas, you'll see more parameters now appear in the property grid. Here we have the stiffness parameters, the flow rule, and the initial conditions. This is of course to indicate that these parameters are now relevant for the elastoplastic analysis. In the settings, I'll change number of elements from, from 100 to 1000 and change the scheme from auto to target. We'll use displacements as a target and we'll change the target from 0 0.01 to 0 0.2. In order for G2 to measure a displacement, we will insert a result point, which is done by clicking a point and then assigning a result point. We can add any number of result points we wish. The target displacement is always being controlled by the first result point. We'll choose number of steps to 10 and also choose mesh adaptivity, yes. We would like to perform three adaptivity iterations, but only in load step number one. This is done by increasing the frequency from 3 to a frequency above the maximum number of load steps, which is in this case 11. Start elements will be kept at 1000. Now let's run the case. Any elastoplastic analysis needs the initial stresses, which are calculated automatically in G2, in a K0 analysis. In the load step number one, we see that the three adaptivity steps are being performed as we wished, and now we increase the load steps. In G2, you'll, the program will automatically perform 10 load steps and try to reach the target goal within these 10 load steps. In the analysis plot, we can follow the course of the calculations. Load multipliers plotted up the y-axis and work equivalent to displacements out the x-axis. After reaching 10 Load steps, we see that the max displacement of 0.2 has exactly been reached and the analysis is done. In G2, we can plot the displacements. And now you see that displacements suddenly appear as meters on the distributions, which is of course relevant now since we've done a load displacement analysis. Animations are plotted the same way as before. A load displacement curve is easily created by choosing the XY plot. In the XY plot, we'll choose point number one and plot the total displacement, and up the Y axis, we'll add the load multiplier. And we generate a curve like this. This curve can be manipulated by left clicking on it and, for example, showing values. Also, the data needed for constructing the load displacement curve is easily accessed here and can be copy-pasted and used for further representation. Now let's have a look 
at the results in our results overview. The load displacement curve has been plotted in Excel and is shown to the right. The applied load required to reach a displacement of 0.2 meters was 484 kilopascals. Comparing to the previous analysis done with limit analysis, we see that this load is very close to the upper bound value of 487 kPa. Plotting the three values computed with limit analysis on the graph looks like this. We have the upper bound of 487 in red, the lower bound with 448 in the green as a blue curve and the green curve as a mean value. The horizontal part of the load displacement curve is closely spaced to the upper bound of the limit analysis. We know that the exact solution of the problem is very close to the green curve shown on the graph. Increasing the number of elements in the elastoplastic analysis will make the horizontal part of the load displacement curve converge towards the green horizontal line.